welcome to the Bible study hour. It's always a pleasure to meet with you to study God's word. And we continue our study this week in the book of Ephesians. I am Lorna Stevenson, and I have with me Pastor James Sunlin on my left and Pastor Alden Mort on the right. These two gentlemen are always here to support me as we go through this study together. But it's always a rewarding exercise to study God's word. And we are so glad that you could have joined us this week. We say thanks to our sponsors, Easy Deal Auto Sales and Tours Limited. And we say thanks to all of those who contribute to making this a possibility so we can study together. Be sure that you have your study guide with you, your Sabbath school lesson quarterly, or your Bible or both so that we can continue. We left off last time at chapter two of Ephesians and that's where we are picking up this time because there's so much in that one little book for us to know about, to understand, and to take within our entire lifestyle. So before we open the Bible, I'm just going to ask you to join us in our opening prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, to you we give the honor, the glory, and the praise. Thank you once more for the privilege to study your words. We need the guidance of your Holy Spirit. So, Lord, send your Spirit now to teach us, to enlighten our eyes, our minds, and may the truths that you have for us be received in our hearts and in the hearts of our viewers. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Last week, we focused on verses 1 to 10 of Ephesians chapter 2. This week, we are picking up at verse 11, so we're going 11 to 22. And we have an interesting topic as we focus on these thoughts, horizontal atonement, the cross, and the church. B before we even take the memory text, let's just look at the, the, the caption for the week's study. Horizontal atonement. What does that say to us? Usually when we talk about atonement, we're talking about, you know, a sort of a bringing together the right. yeah. human family with God, God with the human family. Mm -hmm. But now it's horizontal, so it's not vertical anymore. Mm -hmm. We are talking now about human relationships. That's right. So as we go through with that, we take our memory text. And that is Ephesians 2. And we are looking at verses 13 and 14. What do we see here? But, but now, now in, in Christ, Christ Jesus, Jesus, you who once, once were far off, off have, have been, been brought, brought near by, by the blood, blood of Christ. Christ. For, For he himself is our peace who has made, made us both one. Why do you think Paul is talking like this in his letter? Especially as he talked about you who once were far off have been brought near. It is very uh, obvious in the, the teachings and writings of Paul that salvation is, an, is a serious matter. Mm -hmm. uh, he talks about the fact that, you know, we were born in sin and and he talks about how we have been dead in sin and trespasses and mm -hmm. how... Uh, Jesus Christ becomes the catalyst for our salvation who came to rescue us. And so he's talking about uh, being far away, which means that we were estranged from God before conversion. We have be become enemies of God, but have been brought together uh, as, as, as God's power unites us and he transforms us. We are now brought back together in a harmonious relationship with God. But what happens also is that the relationship not only is damaged with God and us, but with each other. That's and right. There is need for bringing together uh, the family of earth into one. 
as we seek to have that uh, unity with God himself. Okay. You know, when you look at the, the text, you will realize that what we are studying, that there was a, um, a division between the Jews and the Gentiles. Yes. And so, therefore, the Jews look at themselves as God's people. In other words, they were near to God. Near to God. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the Gentiles were so far. far so far. And, you know, Paul, Paul is saying, that, listen, man, we are no more, the Gentiles are not far. They are now brought close by Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And not only that, but we are all one. Mm -hmm. And so even in Galatia, he said, there is no neither Jews nor Greek, neither there is bond nor free, there is no male nor female. He are all one in Christ. Good. So we continue to look at what we are going to get from brought near to Christ, which is a note on which you end there, Pastor. But let's look at the verses 11 to 13 of the same Ephesians chapter 2. Wherefore, remember that he being in time past, Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, he who sometimes were far off, are made nigh by the blood of Christ. You know, you, you started the discussion, Pastor Mort, but we'll just look at it a little bit more. The kind of a relationship that existed between the Jews and the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. it, it was not an easy relationship, you know. <laughs> no, very difficult. It was a rough one. Yes. Yes, because believe me, it, it, it went as far as giving people nicknames. Of course. Mm -hmm. Uncircumcised. Yeah. Gentiles. Yeah. Aliens. Who are you? <laughs> you know, that kind of attitude. Yes. But Paul now in his letter is saying that, hey, the church exists for a real good reason. Yes. Because in Christ, in the church, mm -hmm. we are brought together as one. That's right. So he talks to the believers, not as Jews and the Gentiles, mm -hmm. but as one in Christ. Right. I'm, I'm sure you would want to say something else about that aspect of brought near in Christ. No, um, I, I, you know, Paul in verse 12, look at, you know, look at the relationship and compare it as this. He says, that at the time you were without Christ, talking to, to the Gentile, being alienated from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenant of promise, having no hope without God in this world. Mm -hmm. So he was saying to the, 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 the Gentiles, he was saying to them that, listen man, you were, of a fact, you were not seed of Abraham. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you were... You were, you, you were not in the, the promise of such, yeah. you know. But no, the good news is that no, something happened. And this is happened because of Christ Jesus. Right. You are brought near, put it this way, you are saved through the blood of Jesus Christ. Right. So you are one. And I keep referring to the overall caption for the week's study. Horizontal atonement, the cross, and the church. Mm -hmm. So Paul is here emphasizing what the cross has done for That's right. human beings. Mm -hmm. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 2, verses 14 to 16. And it says, For he is our peace, who have made both one, and have broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in the flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contain the ordinance for to make in himself a twain one new man, so making peace, and that he might reconcile both 
unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. All right, when we read that passage, we are going to be looking at what it has to say as it relates to the section on the reconciliation, God's gift from the cross, and also breaking down the dividing wall. Mm -hmm. Share your thoughts, please. No, no, God's gift, of course, is in Christ Jesus. There is something that happens with this whole idea of sin it that it, it divides. Yes. It divides us from God, it divides us from each other. And that is why we have so much war, so much killing, um, marginalizing of individuals and one country to the next and one ethnic group against the other. There is a tendency to think that we are better than the other. And so there's a whole matter of division. But what Paul is saying is that in Christ, there's no such thing. Because we're children of God, that's one. But two, we have, we have been rescued. We have been reconciled and, and we have been brought back in a right relationship. So in Paul's mind, there's no Gentile. There's no Jew. There's no alien. In Christ, we're all children of God. And that is the most beautiful idea. We're children of God reconciled to him by the power of his grace. And, the, and so the cross becomes that, that, that bridge yeah. that we cross from one to the other side. Okay. Do you remember the, the conversation that Christ had with the woman at the well? I, I think I remember <laughs> something about it, Pastor. I will tell you. Here was um, a, a Samaritan woman, we yeah. call it a Gentile woman. Mm -hmm. And you know, Christ met her and, and she asked, you know, Christ he asked us a very, very important question. He said, the woman said unto her, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our father, hear you, worship in the mountain. And he said that is in Jerusalem in the place where men ought to worship. Mm -hmm. And he was asking Jesus, Jesus, where is the right place? Because of the, you know, the city division. Some my father worship in the mm -hmm. mountain, some worship in the, where is? And Jesus said to her, and to her, it's not about the place, no. That's right. It's about worshiping in spirit and in truth. And that is what Paul is saying to us, that, you know, the Jews is now brought, you know, near mm -hmm. so that they can worship God in spirit and in truth. You understand? It is, we are united. You know, you know, yes, probably you are white or I am black or something, but we are all one. We are free, <laughs> free and slave. We are all one. That's you right. Understand? That's right. And, you know, as we talk about breaking down the wall and what the cross of Christ has done for us, mm -hmm. I suppose when Paul wrote this letter to the Ephesians, he was seeing two things. Well, he was seeing the breaking down of the wall mm -hmm. in two, at two levels. Yes, horizontal and, and vertical. And the physical. Yes, yes. What about this physical wall? Well, that is broken down. Well, we, it is supposed to be broken down mm -hmm. so that we are not supposed to see ourselves different from other believers. Once we have become children of God, there is no division physically. We are one in Christ. So it doesn't matter your ethnicity, your color, your race. Everybody is, in, is, is one in Christ Jesus. But as we consider to pastor, the whole structure of the temple. Mm -hmm. Yes. Exactly. Remember that yeah. it was built in such a way that there was a physical wall yes. which says that, hey, you who are far off, Can't you, come. the Gentile, cannot go beyond this wall. No, <laughs> you're right. And I, I'm, I'm sure that Paul was seeing in his mind, you know, the, the whole matter of that wall being removed. Of course. Because... In Christ, there was no need for this division. That's right. That's yes. Right. Pastor Mort. Yes. You know, when you look at it, they, for example, if the, if the Gentiles should cross over, you know what the result would be? They would have been killed. Mm -hmm. would, that is it. Mm -hmm. So now, when you look at it, you say that, you know, you know, they, you know they, are, they are now brought near. Mm -hmm. They can go to God for themselves, you know, yes. you understand? And that's the good news, you that's, understand? That is good we news. have a God that no matter who you are, you can come to him boldly and you can talk to him. 
I am going to ask a question that is probably a ticklish one, but maybe we would need to make a simple statement on this. How does this matter of the law come into this, yeah. you know, wall and, you know, the division between Jews and Gentiles and that kind of a thing? Well, well you know, there are some persons in the whole Jewish context that yes. felt that um, certain things belong to Jews alone. Mm -hmm. And so there were laws that prevented even the Gentiles from doing this, coming to a certain place, having certain privileges they were not allowed. Mm -hmm. So the law alone was part of the problem. That's right. And, 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 and Paul was saying, when you have become followers of Jesus, those laws and restrictions that you put to, to restrict the Gentiles, they, we don't need them anymore. No, it's, not at all. No, but we need God's moral law. That's right. God's moral standards, which stands for everyone, every time, and always will be there. There, there is a little section of this comment that I'd love to read, which talks about reconciliation. Mm -hmm. Reconciliation is experienced in the moment when one church member lays aside whatever issue divides from another and acknowledges the other church member as a beloved brother or sister who accepts what has been offered. And it goes on to say further down the line that he imagines it invading our lives and destroying our divisions, dissolving our quarrels, and renewing our fellowship with and understanding of each other. Mm -hmm. I wish that as church members, mm -hmm. the now church members, yes. not the church members of Ephesus long ago, right. but the now church members would understand what reconciliation really means right. with our one another. Let's quickly go on as we talk about Jesus, preacher of peace. We are going to be reading verses 17 to 19 of the same chapter 2 of Ephesians. And came and preached peace to you which were afar off and to them that were nigh. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Before we mention the whole matter of peace, there's one verse that I would like us to consider as we refer to Jesus and peace. And that verse is John chapter 14, and it's verse 27. And it says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Now remember that a part of what we are studying is captioned the cross and the church. So we are talking about the cross of Christ mm -hmm. and we are talking about Christ and peace. What are your comments that you would like to make on this aspect, Jesus, preacher of peace. Well, it's an interesting thing that Paul is, is, is making, an interesting point. Uh, remember that the Gentiles and Jews were at war? Oh, yes. Um, as a matter of fact, if you were a Jew, but work for the Gentile, you mm, still you trouble. have trouble. <laughs> and that's why the publicans had such a hard time. Yes. Because they were working for the Romans to collect the taxes. And um, so Paul is saying that Jesus brought peace in the whole process of reconciliation, in the whole matter of the cross. Jesus brought peace. And therefore, it is supposed to be a peaceful coexistence of two different races. Uh, verse 19 uh, reminds us, Now therefore you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints That's right. and of the household of God. That's right. So you, you belong here. <laughs> no more war, no more division. We are together in Christ as one. And if Christ is the focal point, mm -hmm. 
of our worship, mm -hmm. Christ is the focus, yes. then we have to do it Christ's way. Yeah. Of course. So when he said, my peace, I leave with you. Yes. It's his peace that is going to assist us in this process of atonement and reconciliation. Pastor Mort? No. Paul was talking to the church. Yes. And I believe that he was saying that, hey, you must set the example. Mm -hmm. Because when it comes on to the, the, the Gentile and the, the Jews, you can't have this contention in the contention battling, hating each other. Tug of war. <laughs> the tug of war. So you must set the example. And not only that, but Christ is, you know, is, the, is the peace that should, should be, you know, should guide us. You understand? So I, I don't want to see that among you. And, um, and that's why he, he said that, you know, talking about peace. And if there's a place that peace must exist, it should be in the church. I'm not saying that you're not going to have your differences. No, because we are all different. You know, we are all different persons and all that, and we see things differently. But as God's people, we must try and we must endeavor to have peace. You know, sometimes we have to give up our right for peace, but we must endeavor to have it. Amen. Amen. If there's ever a place you said where peace should exist, it's in the church. Of course. <laughs> but sometimes some things happen in the church, we wonder. Yeah. Oh, oh! if we would only make Christ our focus, mm. how different things would be. Far different. And in this section of Paul's letter, we're closing off on that note about the church. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because we're talking now about the church, a holy temple. Mm -hmm. Let's read verses 19 to 22 of the same chapter, Ephesians 2. Now, therefore, you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are builded together for an, inha for an habitation of God through the Spirit. Let's hear what you're saying there, what Paul is saying to the Ephesians and to us about building and a temple. So he's relating to us as a building then. Yeah. He's talking about that we're of the household of God. Mm -hmm. So he's seeing it in a family setting. Yes. Yeah, we're living under the same household, having one father. God is our father. And he's saying we're built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. And, and that for me is critical. This is a family setting. We are brothers and sisters in Christ. So there's no difference whether we are Indian or Chinese or uh, Negroes or we're Caucasian. It does Or you have things. your com complexion and I have mine and exactly. you know, the kind of little difference. That has nothing to do with when it comes to the household of faith. All of those things are not supposed to cause any division. We are built upon the foundation of those who God had used as foundation members. Mm -hmm. And he says, Christ is the chief cornerstone. That means this house is built on a good foundation. As members of the family, we must keep the house strong through love, yes. through care and forgiveness and so forth. And pastor, as you talk, you know, it just came home very strongly to me. That is because we focus so much on ourselves. Definitely. We are so. always so important in this That's whole right. mix of things. That is correct. If we would focus more on Christ. That's right. Some of the things that hurt us, that people say to us at church, wouldn't hurt us. Yeah, true. Because we'd be focusing on Christ. But we're focusing so much on self. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sure you have more to put to that, Pastor Mort. Um, verse 21. Yes. In whom all the building fitly. Framed together groweth 
unto the holy temple. You see, um, in building, you have, you know, sometimes you have different blocks. Mm -hmm. And they sometimes they shape a little different and all that. Mm -hmm. But you see, when they come together and you fit them right, the house is strong and, you know, can endure you know, the storms and sometimes earthquake and all that. Well, you can't even see the block after it is covered. <laughs> and that is Th it. That's right. <laughs> yes. That's right. So, so, and that's what the church should be. Yeah. That's what the church should do. Because we are fitted together. You know, each one looking after the other. Yes. Each one working to bring somebody in for, in the, to, to get to know Christ. And what a force that would be if the church is united. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yes, we have different talents. Yes, we have different gifts. But yet we're united and we are moving for Christ. What powerful army that we would be if we just allow God to rule in our hearts. That's why the church was established yes. mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that that kind of a strength mm -hmm. could be experienced. Yes. Gentlemen, believe it or not, we have run out of time. Mm -hmm. So you have just enough time now to give your closing thought to share with our viewers. Let me say that, you know, what a savior we, we serve, a God who loves us. That, you know, he break down the walls of separation. So no, I am, I am not inferior, no. I am a part of God's family. I have a work to do. And working together with God's people, we can accomplish greatly. I want, what I desire to see the church is the church to be united yes. as a force yes. in this world and breaking down the kingdom of the enemy, the devil. Thank you. Now, God in his whole act of reconciling us did not put his law and his standard aside mm -hmm. to accommodate us as part of the kingdom. His laws, his standards are still maintained. What we need to do is to really cooperate with him. And one of the most important things in the whole process is that our hearts have to be changed. Yes. If we become a part of the family and we are not changed, we're going to have problem. And I think that's part of the crucial problem in the church today. Unchanged individuals will always be a problem in the church. Yes. So we need to really seek and ask God to change us, to change me individually, so that I can fit into the whole building properly and, and yes. serve my purpose. Yes. Thank you so very much. And viewers, just want to say to you that as we have considered briefly this whole matter of horizontal atonement, the cross and the church, I want you to reflect on this and remember that we're talking about relationships among human beings, our interpersonal relationships. We're talking about the cross as it serves the purpose of removing all these barriers so that all of these differences that we see, we only see them because we're not focusing on the cross. Focus on the cross of Christ some more and believe me, we will get rid of these differences and these barriers and we will enjoy the peace of Jesus more because in this day and age, what we need more than anything else is the peace of Christ within us. Remember to join us next week when we meet for the Bible study hour. Have a wonderful week and remember Christ is your peace to go with you through all of your trials. God bless you. Join us now for a closing prayer. Eternal Heavenly Father, our God of peace, we want to thank you for your words. Oh God, we pray for the Holy Spirit to unite us, but also to live according to your words. We ask for your blessing on the viewers and may your love continue to be with them. Thank you, Father, for your saving grace. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Amen. amen.